John King, USA, CNN, weeknights, 7 Eastern. Arnie Gunderson with us now live. Arnie, you were with us very early and throughout this crisis, and you long argued it was worse than they were telling us. Uh, what do you make of this news now? How could they have not known? Well, I'm not surprised. You know, they're saying now, these, these are all calculations. All of the instruments were blown to smithereens, so um, they're calculating what these exposures were. Um, how could they not know? Um, I think there was some confusion, and there's some cultural issues, too, with the Japanese. But, but the biggest problem is this combination of being a regulator and a promoter of nuclear power. The, um, there's a revolving chairs situation in the Japanese structure where executives go to work for the regulator and the regulator goes to work for, for Tokyo Electric. And uh, that makes it hard to really see how serious the accident is while you're in it. And, and as we try to judge the fallout, not only in Japan, and we'll see what that government report says, but we talked about some radiation, relatively low amounts, very low amounts, making its way across the Pacific. You've seen evidence of what's called hot, hot particles showing up on the U.S. West Coast, in Seattle, for example. What are we talking about, and how worried should people be? Well, the, the radiation is... Um uh, initially comes out as a big cloud of gases and and that's what you can measure with a Geiger counter but now what we're finding are these things called hot particles and in the industry we call them fuel fleas because they're incredibly small they're smaller than uh, the, the thickness of your hair um, in Tokyo in April um, measurements indicate that there's about 10 hot particles per day in what a normal person would breathe and uh, it's interesting because in Seattle, uh, it didn't go down that much. It was about five hot particles a day. Um, because most of the time, as we talked about back in April, the, uh, the wind was blowing toward the West Coast. You know, that's why we were warning to uh, wash your lettuce and things like that. Now, what that means is that it's th these hot particles can lodge in your lung or in your digestive tract or your bone and, and over time cause a cancer. But they're way too small to be picked up on a, on a large radiation detector. And so do you believe there are enough of them that people in the West Coast of the United States need to be worried, or is it a, a very minor concern? Well, the average person breathes in about um, uh, 10 cubic meters a day. And uh, the, the filters out there for April show that they were breathing in, in a, per day about five particles. Now, these are charged, which is why we call them fuel fleas, too, and they latch on, on to lung tissue. Um, you know, I'm still advising my friends to wash all of your vegetables to make sure you can get it off. Um, but short of that, we're at a point now where uh, you just can't run from the, the particles that are still in the air. Hmm. We'll keep watching that. I want to show our viewers some satellite images that we have a then and now. Satellite images of the Fukushima nuclear plant on March 14th. Compare it to May 25th. Uh, when you look at this, three months since, uh, do you get the sense looking at the new photos, number one, first and foremost, do things appear to be under control right now? No, the, the units are still leaking. Um, the difference in the picture, though, is it was cold in March. So you could see steam, sort of like breathing on a, on a cold day. Um, now it's hot. So you don't see the steam coming out of the plant, but they're still emitting um, radioactive gases and an enormous amount of radioactive liquid. So um, the only thing that's going to make this go away is time. They're going to need another year or so before this radioactive material cools down to the point where it doesn't boil anymore. And, and, and until it stops boiling, you're going to be cranking out steam and you're going to be cranking out radioactive liquid.